Hello first violins! This is your discussion video for Sheba, for Queen of Sheba. I've got a few notes here. Um, hopefully it this will like streamline the process a little bit for these like lesson videos. I've got I've got to make 15 of these today. Um, so hopefully I can get through them all. My first note for Queen of Sheba is phrasing. Uh, I'd like the first note of each measure to be a little louder and then it kind of comes away. Um, this will be true for the first two bars, but then in measure three and measure four, those are phrased differently. Um, I'm talking about phrasing because you guys have got the notes. It's fine. But right now it just sounds mostly like Like all of them are the same um, and technically if you want to get super technical uh, it's forte and your the, the the arranger didn't put any other indications in there um, but Handel may not have even given his players dynamics at all Baroque musicians were given literal just sheets of notes and then they made up their own bowings, fingerings, and phrasings according to what they felt the piece called for. Um, I think that this will, that by uh, kind of giving emphasis, not accenting the first note of each bar, but giving emphasis to the beginning of the bar and kind of coming away and then moving back to the beginning of the bar, um, it'll give motion to the piece. So. be trying to demonstrate this more efficiently um, in the play along videos. I just wanted to talk about it a little bit first so that when you watch the play along video that's something that you can try to, to pay attention to, try to key into. Hopefully my microphone will pick up the dynamic contrasts that I'm trying to get across. I might have to exaggerate it a ton for my microphone to pick it up. Also, you have to tend to exaggerate things for them to carry across to the audience in the concert hall anyway. So um, just watch the play along video a little bit first to see if you can pick up on the phrasing that I am trying to uh, communicate to you guys. And then create that in your own playing. <laughs> um, also, another note, Basically, I've already said this, um, but you're playing the notes of the first half really well. I just want there to be a little bit more musical shapes in there, which is something that I'm going to try to uh, try to communicate through the videos, uh, the play along videos. I'll also probably be doing a lot of um, physical movement to try to help you know that I'm playing this loud and now I'm leading into the next bar so that there's visual cues for you to follow as well as oral, meaning listening, um, cues. So, on to the second half. Um, the solos just need to be louder. They, they need to be more confident from everyone. Um, the reason for this is because there's, it, it's popping between solo and tutti, uh, so like, a duet and the full orchestra and that's a really cool textural change but the orchestra is so loud that if the solos play really soft it's gonna it's like when you turn all of the lights off and it takes a minute for your eyes to adjust to the darkness um, that's what it's kind of like for our ears that it's been so loud and now we can't actually really oh now I can almost hear that there's some people playing. Um, so you'll notice that there's no dynamic marking here. There has been no dynamic marking since the forte at the beginning of the piece. So technically you should all be forte here. Um, that being said, I'm going to talk about each of the solos 
individually. Um, I don't have the names of who's playing each one, so I can't talk to you guys, like, directly, but just, I don't know. I'm going to be saying the measure numbers of the solos, so hopefully you can follow along. Um, the solo at measure 33. This is just going to be a running theme with all these first violin solos, is be careful of the C naturals. This whole piece has C naturals, unless otherwise marked. And some people are just wailing away on C sharps, and it's really messing with the tonality of the piece. So be careful of your C natural. And actually, it's in like every single bar of your solo, except for measure 38, except for the last bar. Um, also, I'd like you to use your fourth finger for the note E in measure 36. Uh, I don't want it to... Like, that's just an unnecessary string crossing when, when you have to cross the string for a single note, so... Uh, so make sure I use your fourth finger for the E there and that your second finger is low. Let's do a little recap on how to even play C natural. Low two, right? If C sharp is up here um, on the tape, C natural is back here beside your first finger. It is close to your first finger, not somewhere in this no man's land in between the tapes. Um, it's way back here. If you end up playing something in <laughs> in this area it is a wrong note regardless of what note you were going for c sharp is here c natural is here those are your only options anything else is is a wrong note um so now that i've recapped c natural moving on um i'm not really talking about the 2ds because they're basically fine uh solo at measure 43 fourth finger E um, it's even marked in your part for this one um, to use your fourth finger for the one in 43 and I'd also love for you to use your fourth finger in measure 44 as well um, if you haven't watched the other discussion videos yet uh, or if I haven't mentioned it in the other discussion videos yet I have a fourth finger rule that if a note is longer than two quarter note beats you use your fourth finger. Uh, the one in measure 43 doesn't adhere to that rule, but because it would be causing a string crossing for a single note, we use our fourth finger. We, we want to avoid using open E at all costs. So we definitely don't want to play open E for three beats in measure 44. Use your fourth finger there. Um, Make sure you're playing low two. I just went over how to play C natural. Uh, and then just another, uh, this is a musical suggestion. Um, crescendo in measure 50 to help bring the orchestra back in. I already talked about wanting all of the solos to be louder anyway. Um, so it'll, it'll kind of almost dovetail the duet to full orchestra, um, color change if you guys crescendo a little bit and bring everybody back in with you. It's just a, it's a cool little thing to do. Um, moving on to the 2D. I, I do want to talk about the 2D here at um, just 53 and 54. Make sure that everybody's playing C sharps now. We're actually starting in I guess technically measure 53 but probably measure 51 uh, Handel is changing the key here um, without actually doing a really legit key signature change he has added C sharp in everything uh, until gosh uh, until measure 81 every C you have is C sharp until measure 81 so technically, we're in the key of D major here, even though the key signature is G major. So because he's sneakily changed the key for what? 50 to 60, 60, 
30 bars. Um, make sure that in all of the 2D sections, you are playing C sharps. This goes for 53, 54, um, 62, 64, 73, 79. Um, there's a lot of C sharps happening, so beware of those C sharps in the 2D section. Uh, right now, for the soloist at measure 55, watch out for the F sharps and that one C sharp. <laughs> My notes are so stupid. Um, so I think maybe this was the second violin soloist that was having issues playing um, F sharps high enough. But regardless, make sure that your F sharps are high enough. Um, and then you've got a single C sharp in measure 58 but you've just played the 2D and 53 and 54, so you're kind of, you're like, got your second finger in high second finger mode, right? Um, so just make sure that you catch that C sharp and measure 58. Um, for the 2D and measure 63, just a real quick um, kind of fingering helpful suggestion. Uh, try to put your first finger on both, uh, both the E and the A strings for measure 63 so that you can play one, three, one, three. Sorry, this is a horrible angle to be playing. Those are not the right notes at all. Um, but try to get, if you get your first finger down in between the strings on both strings, then you don't have to be going one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, and like jumping your finger back and forth. So try to get your finger on both strings if possible. Soloist at measure 69, long, flowy, and connected. Um, the, the issue that I've been hearing with this solo is it's going... And it really sounds about that loud too. Like it, it sounds kind of like a scared little mouse and Carney may have been coaching you guys to play with like space in between the notes um, and, and everything. But now you've kind of taken that to an extreme degree and there's too much space and it sounds too choppy. This could also, this solo could be played in third position if you guys end up going fast enough that you need to play in third position, it would be helpful. Um, you starting in measure 68, you play that E natural with your second finger. And then shift down in 73. Um, because that way you are avoiding open E. the louder and more confidently you play this, the more, the more like gross that E string is going to sound. So maybe that's why you're playing it quietly is because the E string is just kind of a nasty sound that we don't like to play very loud on. Um, so if you feel confident playing this in third position, you'd be starting with, let me get my taped up violin. Um, you start with your second finger on your fourth finger tape on the note E. F sharp is a whole step away. G natural is right beside it. So two, three, two, two, one. Four, three, three, two. Three, four, three, two, two, three, two, one. Two, three, two, one. Shift down. Three, four, three, two. Um, so that is a fingering option for that um, to help keep it all on one string. It minimizes, it completely actually gets rid of all string crossings for this passage, which will help you play it more flowy and connected and also avoid your open E string, the cardinal sin of violin playing. Um, I already mentioned 
uh, to watch out for the C sharps in the 2D section, 73 and 79. Um, as as a whole, uh, these these eighth notes could be more connected from everyone. Um, using nice big long bows and connecting each bow to the the next one not going what i'm hearing kind of right now is i'm just kind of hearing the the big beats and not really hearing a whole bunch of afterwards so trying to make a big long line out of it And again, I will try to show you a little bit more of the phrasing um, in the play along videos. Onwards to the soloist at measure 81. This one is almost the same as the solo at measure 33. This one is just shorter. It's, it's two bars shorter. Um, it would actually be kind of a smart idea if the person at 33 was playing the solo at 81 because you already basically know how it goes. Um, but if you are not the same person, make sure that you're playing a low too. We are back to having C naturals here. So make sure that you make that switch and, uh, and try to use your fourth finger for the E. It's actually marked this time in measure 81 to use your fourth finger there. Um, onwards to the soloist at 89. If the soloist is the same person that played at 69, you should be good at this flowy, connected um, uh, phrasing, playing thing that I want here. But if you are not the same soloist that played at 69, play long, flowy, and connected. <laughs> um, this is actually the same solo that was uh, played at measure 69, except this one is lowered by a fifth. Uh, so this one could also be played in third position if you want to, um, instead of playing, instead of starting with your second finger on the A string, you also don't have the pickup here, um, you'd be starting with your third finger on the D string. Three, two, two, one, four, three, three, two, three, four, three, two, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one shift down. Three, four, three, two, three, oh, and then whatever, you got it. It's it's in first position from now on. Um, just make sure the editor has uh, even helped you out in measure 95, D sharp. Um, play this with a high third finger. That's why that arrow pointing up is there because you've got to play E is the very next note with your fourth finger. So if you end up playing D sharp with a low fourth finger, you're gonna have to slide your fourth finger up or God forbid, play an open E. Um, so, um, yeah, watch your, watch your fingerings there in 95 and 96 to make sure you're getting the right notes and playing it with a high three and a fourth finger, not sliding your fourth finger around or playing open E. Um, mm -hmm. uh, as I said, this, uh, the solo at 89 is almost the same as the one at 69, but this one is now extended by a few bars. That's the, the bars 93 through 96, who are bringing us to another key. Before we were hinting at the key of D major, now we are hinting at the key of E minor, which is this D sharp is super important because it's the leading tone to E. D sharp to E, you get that motion there. Um, so that's why everybody in the 2D gets D sharps and C sharps at 99 and 100. So make sure that you are getting all of those notes in there, 2D players. Um, measure 99, one, I would go ahead and use open for this. Uh, one, open, high three, high two. Um, this is, this is a tough little spot. One open, high three, high two, one open, normal three, high two, three, one, two, three, open, one, two, high three, four, one. 
I, I'm not sure if I'm hitting <laughs> the tapes. I hope I am. I can't see them. Um, so make sure that you're, you're getting all of these accidentals because Handel is hinting at, at different keys here. Um, and it actually cadences, it ends in the key of E minor, which is kind of sad. And you're like, oh no, this is the entrance for a queen. And like, did she die? Is she sick? What happened? And then you go back to the beginning and it's G major again and you end all happy and it's fine. Um, also, sorry, one more note for um, soloist at 89. In measure 96, can you crescendo into 97 to help bring the orchestra back in? I mentioned that to um, the person that was soloing at measure 43 to, to help crescendo into 50. This doesn't happen in every at the end of every solo, but any of the solos that end in four quarter notes, you have the opportunity to build and bring the orchestra in on the next beat. So it's a little bit less of a stark contrast between two players to an orchestra. Um, but also I want the soloists to be louder. So it's not, uh, it's, it's not such a huge jump in dynamics. Like if I were a sound engineer trying to record this concert, it would actually kind of be, it would be next to impossible to record the soloists right now because you guys are playing so quietly that the, the, the amount, the, the volume that I would be recording the full ensemble at would not even pick up the sound that you guys make when you were playing so soft by yourselves. The microphones couldn't even pick up the sound that you are making. So be louder. Um, hopefully I will get a chance to work with you guys kind of individually on your solos in class, but hopefully this discussion helped a little bit. Um, that being said, check out how I play them. Play along with me <laughs> in these videos. Um, I'm gonna do a, a slightly, um, actually I don't remember what I did for Shiva. I, I already posted all the viola videos and I don't remember if I did a slow version of Shiva or I just went for it because you guys are, are going so fast right now. Um, Whatever it is, I'll be posting the videos around me here. Um, I really encourage you guys to go play along with the other violin parts, especially, actually every single one of you is a soloist. Um, so you guys really definitely should go play along with the second violin video so that you can see how your part actually fits together, the harmonies you are supposed to be creating together when you are playing your part correctly with all the right notes and the second violin part is being correctly played with all of the right notes. Um, hopefully when you play that with your actual duet partner in class, it sounds exactly the same because everybody's playing the right notes. Um, but we'll get there. We've still, we've still got some time before the concert. Um, but hopefully this was helpful. Go play with these videos. Um, Happy practicing, and I will see you for the next discussion.